This is the Music History Today podcast for September 17th. On today's show, Keith Moon blows up, almost literally. RCA's first LP is released, and the only wall that matters on this date is Pink Floyd's. First up, though, on this date in 1952, Frank Sinatra recorded for Columbia Records for the last time. In 1955, the Perry Como TV show became an hour-long show from a half hour. In 1956, the BBC banned Bill Haley and the Comet song Rockin' Through the Rye because they said that it offended Scottish listeners. Okay. In 1960, the Everly Brothers recorded the song Walk Right Back. In 1964, the Beatles were given $150,000 to play a concert in America by baseball team owner Charlie Finley, who used to own the Oakland A's at the time. At that time, it was the most amount ever paid to a performer for one concert. In 1967, Keith Moon of The Who blew up his drums during an appearance on the Smothers Brothers Comedy Hour TV show. However, they used way too many explosives and the resulting explosion injured Keith's leg. In 1967, same day, The Doors appeared on the Ed Sullivan TV show. The band was asked to change their line, Girl We Couldn't Get Much Higher, to Girl We Couldn't Get Much Better, from, of course, the song Light My Fire. They actually agreed to do it, okay, until they didn't, and then they sung the original line. They were, of course, then banned from the show. In 1968, the Supremes recorded the song Love Child. In 1973, Billy Joel recorded the song Piano Man, and Merrill Osmond of the Osmond Brothers married his wife, Mary Carlson. In 1974, Bob Dylan recorded the song Shelter from the Storm. In 1978, Queen held a bike race with naked bikers for their single cover art and the video, of course, for the song Bicycle Race. In 1980, Bette Midler's movie Divine Madness premiered. In 1982, Pink Floyd's movie version of their album The Wall premiered. In 1983, singer and actress Vanessa L. Williams became the first African-American winner of the Miss America beauty pageant. The pageant committee would force her to relinquish her title not too long thereafter because of a scandal over nude photos that she had taken years earlier. And yes, her exact name is Vanessa L. Williams because Vanessa Williams was already taken by someone else through the actor's equity name system. So she had to change her name to Vanessa L. Williams. There you go. Also, in 1983, the variety talent competition TV show Star Search premiered. In 1989, Natalie Cole married producer Andre Fisher. In 1992, Frank Zappa performed in public for the last time when he conducted parts of his piece, The Yellow Shark, with an ensemble in Frankfurt, Germany. In 1994, Scott Wieland of the Stone Temple Pilots married his wife, Janina Castaneda. In 1997, Fleetwood Mac started their first tour in 20 years. In 1999, rapper Master P signed a contract to play basketball with the Toronto Raptors. He only played during their summer league and was then cut. In 2000, the Farm Aid 2000 concert was held. In 2003, Billy Corgan of the Smashing Pumpkins did a reading of his poetry at Chicago's Art Institute. In 2005, country music singer Terry Clark married her tour manager, Greg Cassor. In 2009, Avril Lavigne and some 41's Derek Wibley announced their separation. In 2010, the Harry Nilsson film documentary, Who is Harry Nilsson and Why is Everybody Talking About Him, was released. In 2012, the Beach Boys had a falling out with two members of the group touring with the band's name, which led, of course, to a bunch of lawsuits. And in 2016, the annual Farm Aid concert took place. In classical music in 1931, Paul Abraham's operetta, Victoria and Her Husser, premiered, and on that same day, 1931, a recording by the Philadelphia Orchestra of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony became the first LP record to be released. RCA Victor was the record label that released it. In theater, in 1946, the musical review Gypsy Lady opened on Broadway, 
1951, the musical review Borscht Capades opened on Broadway. In 1955, the musical Ankles Away closed on Broadway, not to be confused with Anchors Away. And in 1995, the Broadway show Love, Valor, Compassion closed. In award ceremonies that were held on September 17th, in 2005, Diana DeGarmo of American Idol fame got the Horizon Award from the Georgia Music Hall of Fame. Albums that were released on September 17th include in 1964 when Manfred Mann released the Manfred Mann album. In 1966, the Ventures released Wild Things. In 1971, Coliseum released Coliseum Live. In 1973, long before he became really popular, Rick Springfield released Comic Book Heroes. In 1975, The Scorpions released In Trance. In 1976, Ringo Starr released Ringo's Rotogravure. In 1979, Judas Priest released Unleashed in the East. And on that same day, Frank Zappa released Joe's Garage Act One. In 1980, The Doobie Brothers released One Step Closer. In 1982, Phil Lynott released the Phil Lynott album. In 1984, General Public released All the Rage, and Timothy B. Schmidt released Playing It Cool. In 1985, the Thompson Twins released Here's to Future Days. In 1987, Yes released Big Generator, and Frank Zappa released Frank Zappa with the London Symphony Orchestra Volume 2. In 1990, the Cocktoo Twins released Heaven or Las Vegas. In 1991, Guns N' Roses released Use Your Illusions, Volumes 1 and 2. It was a two-record separate release, actually. Both albums, by the way, debuted on the Billboard charts at numbers 1 and 2, with Use Your Illusions 2 being the number one album that week when it debuted. In 1991, same day, Mariah Carey released Emotions, Hole released Pretty on the Inside, Uncle Tupelo released Still Fear Gone, Steve Earle released Shut Up and Die Like an Aviator, and Ozzy Osbourne released No More Tears. In 1992, KMFDM released Money. In 1996, Cake released Fashion Nugget, Warren Zevon released I'll Sleep When I'm Dead, ZZ Top released Rhythmine, and Tool released Anemia. In 1997, the Goo Goo Dolls released their EP Bang and Hall and & Oates, or Daryl Hall and John Oates as they like to be called officially, released Marigold Sky, although the two of them aren't talking to each other at the moment. In 2002, Natalie Cole released Ask a Woman Who Knows. In 2007, Mark Knopfler released Kill to Get Crimson. In 2013, Berlin released Animal. The band released the band Live at the Academy of Music, 1971. And Elvis Costello and the Roots released Wise Up Ghost. Singles that were released in the UK on September 17th include in 1982 when The Clash did a twofer. They released Should I Stay or Should I Go and Straight to Hell. Also on that same day, The Pretenders released Back on the Chain Gang, Stevie Wonder released Rhythm in the Sky, and John Mellencamp, then known as John Cougar, released Jack and Diane. Meanwhile, in America, in 1955, the shortest release song of all time was released as a promo. It was Les Paul's Magic Melody Part 2 which was only two notes. That was the entire song. In 1962, The Drifters released Up on the Roof. In 1963, Aretha Franklin released Skylark. In 1964, The Supremes released Baby Love. In 1973, Led Zeppelin released Dire Maker and The Carpenters released Top of the World. In 1982, George Thorogood released Bad to the Bone. In 1986, Madonna released True Blue. In 1987, Bruce Springsteen released Brilliant Disguise. In 1990, Daryl Hall and John Oates released So Close. In 1991, Guns N' Roses released Don't Cry. In 1998, The Goo Goo Dolls released Slide. And in 2002, Santana with Michelle Branch released The Game of Love and Kelly Clarkson released A Moment Like This. 
Before we go any further, we'd like to tell you that there is now a Music History In-Depth podcast where we go more in-depth on a few of the events that happen in music history for that particular week. The Music History In-Depth podcast runs every Tuesday on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts from, as does our Music Halls of Fame podcast, which talks about a member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame along with other Music Halls of Fame, museums, and walks of fame. The Music Halls of Fame podcast drops every Thursday and can also be found on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Now, back to this podcast. Artists who were born on September 17th include country music singer Hank Williams Sr., Keith Flint of The Prodigy, EDM producer Sophie, John Walker of Panic at the Disco, singer Scott Hoying of Pentatonix, singer De La Ghetto, Chuck Kamau of Simple Plan, Mile Misaljun of Eden's Crush, Vin Rock of Naughty by Nature, rapper R.D., singer Choi Young Hae of Got7, rapper Unknown T, songwriter Myra, singer Slater, Lamont McLemore of The Fifth Dimension, Fee Wable of The Tubes, Steve Sanders of The Oak Ridge Boys, Lord Jamar of Brand Nubian, bassist Bill Black of Elvis Presley's backup band, Bill Burkett of The Pogues, Tom Stevens of The Long Riders, gospel singer B.B. Winans of The Winans, singer Anastasia, jazz saxophonist Syl Austin, band leader Brother Jack McDuff, saxophonist Theo Lovendy, bassist David Happy Williams, guitarist Ty Tabor of King's X, rapper and producer Dougie Fresh, Composer Joël François Durand, singer John Penny of Ned's Atomic Dustbin, guitarist Adam Devlin of The Blue Tones, singer Marcus Sanders of High Five, singer and actress Nona Gay, Latin music singer Jennifer Peña, country music singer-songwriter Greg Bates, singer Taylor Ware, pianist and composer Ralph Sharon, saxophonist Hubert Rostang, and composer Charles Griffiths. Artists who unfortunately passed away on September 17th include composer, writer, philosopher, and mystic Hildegard of Bingham, who passed away in 1179 at the age of 81. Composer Lucas Olsender passed away in 1604 at the age of 69. Composer Olaf Rudbeck passed away in 1702 at the age of 71. Composer Joseph Planicki passed away in 1732 at the age of 40. Composer and conductor Franz Xaver Sussmayer passed away in 1803 at the age of 37. Composer Henri Hamal passed away in 1820 at the age of 76. Composer Giacomo Tritto passed away in 1824 at the age of 91. Composer Francesco Pollini passed away in 1846 at the age of 84. Composer Louis Schubert passed away in 1884 at the age of 56. Composer Ignaz Brühl passed away in 1907 at the age of 60. Composer Edmund van der Straten passed away in 1934 at the age of 79. Jazz pianist Jimmy Yancey passed away in 1951 at the age of 56. Composer Henry Huss passed away in 1953 at the age of 91. Jazz saxophonist Herbie Fields passed away in 1958 at the age of 39. Composer Jose Morocco passed away in 1960 at the age of 81. Opera singer Fritz Wunderlich passed away in 1966 at the age of 35. Composer Hugo Winterhalter passed away in 1973 at the age of 63. Jazz pianist Lou Hooper passed away in 1977 at the age of 83. Composer Miroslav Kabalek passed away in 1979 at the age of 71. Composer Manos Loizos passed away from complications from strokes in 1982 at the age of 44. Violinist Zeno Francescati passed away in 1991 at the age of 89. Rob Tyner of the group MC5 passed away from heart issues in 1991 at the age of 46. Composer Baling Hamdi passed away in 1993 at the age of 60. 
Zydeco musician John De La Fosse passed away in 1994 at the age of 55. Jazz musician Jesse Hill passed away in 1996 at the age of 63. Singer Frankie Vaughn passed away from heart issues in 1999 at the age of 71. Composer Alfred Reed passed away in 2005 at the age of 84. Session musician Al Casey of the Wrecking Crew passed away in 2006 at the age of 69. Pulitzer Prize winning composer Leon Kitchener passed away in 2009 at the age of 90. Country music singer Marvin Rainwater passed away in 2013 at the age of 88. Country musician George Hamilton IV passed away in 2014 at the age of 77. Composer and conductor David Wilcox passed away in 2015 at the age of 95. Percussionist Lauder de Oliveira of the group Chicago passed away from a heart attack while on stage in 2017 at the age of 77. And jazz pianist Harold Mayburn Jr. passed away in 2019 at the age of 83. Next on the Music History Today podcast, it is September 18th, when in 1970, Jimi Hendrix passed away. (laughs) 